Hello everybody, welcome back to Med School EU. Today we're going to be talking about fundamentals of inorganic chemistry and specifically we have to discuss the main properties of inorganic compounds including acids and salts. These are the two that we left out from the last lecture as they will take some time to explain here. This lecture will be focused primarily on the pH of salts. Uh, how to discover the pH of salts, how do we predict what pH a salt is going to have when it's dropped in water. But before we get to that, we need to know what is pH. pH is the measurement of the concentration of hydrogen ion in a solution. And it is a scale. So this scale goes from 0 to 14. So let's make a quick scale here. 0 down to 14. And in the middle, we're going to have seven. So th they're going to be based on points, essentially. It's like a point system. Seven is identified as neutral, meaning that it is not uh, going to be acidic or basic. It's going to be neutral pH. Uh, so the concentration, essentially at neutral, the concentration of hydrogen ion is equal to the concentration of hydroxide ion. And as we talked about earlier, hydroxide represents a base. Hydrogen ion represents an acid, so it, at pH of 7, they're going to be equal in concentration. By the way, these square brackets represent concentration in chemistry. This will be used a little bit further on when we do calculations. Now, if we're going anywhere from 7 and down to the left side to 0, this will get more acidic as we approach 0. And moving to the right side, it will get more basic as we approach 14. The next notion to discuss is going to be strong versus weak acids and bases. So strong acids or strong bases will fully dissociate into ions when dropped in an aqueous solution. So as an example, what this means is if we have HCl, which will be a strong acid, and it is in water, so it's going to now dissolve in water, and it's fully dissolved, so it's going to be split into its ions, H plus and Cl minus. So if I have my HCl, this bond is going to be broken, and we're going to just form the H plus and Cl minus floating in a solution of water. And when this occurs, this full dissociation only occurs for strong, acids and strong bases. So something like NaOH, which is a strong base, will fully dissociate into Na plus and OH minus. Now, as you can see, if you have full dissociation, what does this really mean, full dissociation? Well, essentially, as you can see, pointed by this arrow, that we're going to have no more reactant. All we're going to have is product. This is the only thing that will be in the solution, the H plus and Cl minus plus the water. And when we have more H plus and more Cl minus, there's going to be an increase in the concentration of H plus in the water, which will then cause it to be acidic. Whereas, and extremely acidic, this will lean towards like zero or one. Remember, the further you get to the zero, the more acidic it is. And only the very strong acids will be extremely acidic at the zero and one scale. Now with the base, as you can see, it makes OH minus the hydroxide ion, which means that NaOH is gone in the solution. It does not exist anymore. And all we have is the Na plus and OH minus. So there's going to be a rise in the concentration of OH minus. If there's a rise in concentration of OH minus, there will be a decline in the concentration of H plus because they do not exist together. So essentially, when we're going further to the right towards the 14, you're going to have a rise in OH minus and a decline in H plus proportionately, one to one proportion. And because of that effect, it's going to be more basic. Now with the acidic, vice versa happens, you have an increase in H plus, that means you have a decrease in the concentration of OH minus. And when that occurs, of course, we have an acidic solution. If we're talking about weak acids and weak bases, 
they only partially dissociate. So if we have uh, acetic acid, CH3COOH, and that is going to be in water, it will make CH3COO minus plus H plus. So it's, it's going to act as an acid because it will give up its H plus. However, this will be attributed with bo both arrows. But essentially, in the rea when the reaction is occurring, the majority of this is still present. So this is what the majority of the compound still looks like. Whereas this, very little of CH3COO minus and very little of the proton is being generated. And so if very little concentration of the proton being generated, well, we have a very, very little rise in the concentration of H+, tiny little rise. And that tiny little rise leads to acidic, yes, but it's going to be barely acidic. So the pH is going to be maybe five, right? It's, it's off from the seven, it's still acidic, but it's not close to zero or one. And that makes it a weak acid. Now we have other examples of weak bases as well and they work exactly the same and that is simply because the dissociation is not complete it is only partial because some of it actually the most of it will stay in this sort of presence and when it's like this when acid is in its regular form without being dissociated it has no effect because the only effect it has is when it actually has separated into its hydrogen ion because the hydrogen ion is the measurement of pH. So for strong acids, we've got HCl, hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic. We've got HNO3, H2SO4, and HClO4. These are the six strong acids that we have in nature. And these are the six strong bases that we have. KOH, calcium hydroxide, SROH, and BAOH. So these are the ones you should memorize. If you see any other acid or base, they will be considered as weak. Now let's apply all that we just learned to salts. The reason why salts can actually change the pH and have an effect on it is because when dissolved in water, they form cations and anions. And because these ions will be flowing in water, they're gonna have an effect on the water and therefore they can change the pH. So essentially what the exam is asking us to do is to predict what the pH will be if this salt is dropped into water. What effect is it going to have? And there's gonna be several scenarios that we're gonna deal with. Scenario number one, for example, we have sodium chloride, salt. So sodium comes from a strong base, NaOH. And chlorine also comes from a strong acid, which will be HCl. Now those two are going to counteract each other. And since they both dissolve fully, since they're both um, strong, they're going to fully dissolve, meaning that the ions will just remain Cl- and Na+, without bonding with the water. They're not going to do anything with the water. These ions will simply remain there and they're going to have no effect. So they will essentially just cancel each other out and there will be no effect on the concentration of H plus or the concentration of OH minus. They're going to be steady. They're going to be the same. And when they are the same, then the pH will be neutral. It will be seven. And again, that is only due to the fact that it's strong acid, strong base that fully dissolve. And when they fully dissolve, Na plus, and Cl- minus do not react with water. If they're not going to be doing the reaction, then the ions that, that are present in the water are going to remain under the same concentration. Scenario number two, we're gonna have a salt that will be having a strong base or comes from a strong base and a weak acid. So for example, if we have uh, sodium fluoride, NaF, 
Sodium, as we know, comes from strong base, which will be NaOH. And fluorine comes from a weak acid, HF. Remember, this is not one of the strong acids from the halogens, therefore forms a weak acid. So let's talk about how it will affect the pH. Now, since the HF will not fully dissociate, it means that F minus that will be coming from the salt, it will bond with the H plus from water. It's going to react with it. And when it reacts with it, well, it, that means it takes away H plus because it forms, it now is actually going to form HF because remember, these do not dissolve very well. So they're actually going to bond and form when they are present. And so when that happens, because it forms the HF, it's going to lower the concentration of the ion. And when it lowers the concentration of the ion, then we're going to have a pH that is higher than seven. So it is going to be basic. Scenario number three, we're going to have the opposite going on. We have a salt that is going to come from a weak base and a strong acid. For example, if we have something like iron chloride, the iron here is coming from a weak base, which is FeOH3, so weak base, and the chlorine comes from a strong acid, which will be HCl. So since the, the chlorine is going to have no effect on the pH because it's not actually going to bond with the H+, since it forms a strong acid, in the water, it's not going to make that formation because it will fully dissociate. It will just remain as Cl minus. It's not going to bond with the water. However, the iron will because it's weak. So it is the iron Fe3 plus will bond with OH minus. And when it bonds with OH minus, it forms FeOH3. And now that we have a higher concentration of FeOH3, we're going to have a lower concentration of OH minus. And by definition, if you have a lower concentration of OH minus, you're going to have a higher concentration of H plus. And now since the pH is a measurement of concentration of H plus, it's going to be rising. And if it's rising, then it's going to be closer to zero. So essentially, we're going to have a pH that is lower than seven and will be acidic. And finally, scenario number four. Here we're going to have a salt that forms both weak base and weak acid. So something like uh, NH4F, so ammonium fluoride. NH4 will make a weak base and fluoride will make a weak acid, which we already discussed, HF. So here, it cannot be predicted the effect that it will have by simply looking at it because they're both weak. So we need to know how far they will dissolve. And to know that, we're going to have to compare these values. So we'll have to compare the Ka and the Kb. If you're wondering what Ka and Kb are, I'm not going to go into detail about this. However, you should know that Ka and Kb give you the level of dissociation for a particular compound in water. So essentially, these values are going to be used for weak acids and weak bases to see really how much do they actually dissociate. And what we do here is we have to compare the values for the acid and the base. And whichever one comes out on top will make up what the pH will be. So um, in this case, the Ka of the acid, so NH4 plus, this is the um, ion that we're talking about. The Ka is 5.68 times 10 to the negative 10. And you will not have to memorize these values. If anything, if this ever comes up, which I really doubt, um, they will give you these values. There's no way you're going to have to memorize these. And then Kb uh, for F minus, is going to be 1.6 times 10 to the negative 11, meaning that the Ka is higher. It's, it's one degree higher. And therefore, if Ka is bigger than Kb, 
Therefore, it's going to be an acidic solution. Now, there are particular calculations involved to do this, which is not going to be required for you to know for the test. However, you should know how these values are going to be found out if you are given the Ka values and you're asked to compare and find whether it will form neutral, acidic, or basic solution. Now, if we had a hypothetical example the other way, if we had Ka uh, that is smaller than Kb, then of course we would have a basic solution. And if they equal each other, Ka is equal to Kb, then we're going to have a neutral solution. These are the four scenarios that may come up with any salt that's being dropped in an aqueous solution. And this is how you predict their pH. So we're done with this unit. We're moving on to the next one. Click on the next video to find out more about chemical reactions and introduction to stoichiometry.